all the places visited by the Planet Earth team, the most remote was Mongolia's Gobi Desert. But this was the location for one of the most remarkable desert animals of all, the elusive wild Bactrian camels. The trip required months of planning, but arriving in Mongolia's capital, Ulaanbaatar, was merely the start of what was to be the most challenging of shoots. Okay. We're going for a two-month trip, and, and basically this area is so remote that uh, we have to take everything that we need with us. So we need two months' supply of food, fuel, um, and in the area we're going to, there's no viable source of water, so we have to bring that in too. So it really is a quest, and the quest for camels begins today. From Ulaanbaatar, the team were going to have to travel for a further five days to get to where the camels live. Despite its huge size, Mongolia has only 500 miles of paved road, so it wasn't long before they were heading cross-country. But even their off-road vehicles were to struggle in this terrain. And with few vehicles, petrol stations were rather Heath Robinson affairs, without any of the usual safety considerations. The Gobi Desert is as large as Holland, but surprisingly difficult to find without any roads or signs. The team were heading for the outer part of Outer Mongolia, and in this vast, remote and rugged wilderness, they were going to have to find a group of animals whose population numbered a mere 800. The small community of Bayan Koro was the gateway to the Gobi Desert and home to an expert tracker called Choi Jin. His skills were vital in the search for wild camels, and it appeared the camels needed him too. He actually killed two wolves, with, uh, which, which killed five camels. Cow camels. Cow and cow. Cow and cow. Cow and cow. Cow and cow. Fifty camels. Fifty camels. Okay, uh, two wolves killed fifty camels. This is uh, what he tells us now. Choi Jin has been tracking wild camels for 50 years, so if anyone was going to get Henry to within filming distance of these elusive animals, then it was him. Reliable vehicles were also vital to the success of the trip. The team's Russian-made supply vehicle may have needed to be warmed up with a blowtorch each morning, but in the event of a breakdown, they would be more than covered by the collection of spare parts brought along by the Mongolian drivers. It was comforting to know that here was a vehicle whose engine could be rebuilt by a man with a file in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Fortunately, they weren't depending on it for a quick getaway. Since leaving Ulaanbaatar, the team had driven 1,500 miles through the middle of Mongolia. The supply vehicle had done the same, but they had had to give it several days' head start. But before leaving Bayan Toro, the team had had to deal with some local politics, as Tom explains. Our interpreter um, decided to pick a fight with the stand-in head of the park and headbutted him in the face, <laughs> which is not ideal for relations. Um, but anyway. Our driver, who was also very drunk, decided to, uh, to, um, that this was his chance to step in, and he's a big lad, and um, he then punched our interpreter in the face, um, and, uh, he, yeah, knocked him flat. Luckily, there were no hard feelings the following morning, and the team were able to get on with the serious business of finding wild camels. It wasn't long before Choi Jin spotted some promising signs. 
And apparently one of the ways in which you can tell how fresh the prints are is very, very small detail. Um, if, he, if he sees a, a little small stone in the print and it's got some sand on it, you know, like that, he knows that uh, it's very recently, because otherwise that sand would have blown away, because it's just a very loose little bit of grains of sand. But it's very small, tiny little signs like that, and that's why he's walking across such a large area. Sure enough, up ahead, the team finally had their first sighting of wild camels. They were already running. Poaching has made wild camels very nervous of people. About three or four kilometers away, they spotted us from that distance. And that's going to be our real problem, getting close to these animals. I mean, they're capable of spotting us for about five kilometers. They're running for 70 k's in the opposite direction. So this is what's going to make this filming incredibly difficult. But we're going to need all Henry's extremely accomplished film skills to get us close. And we, we know he can do it. What do you think? I don't know. It was easy to understand Henry's doubts when faced with the sheer scale of the landscape, the scarcity of camels, and their fear of people. After their first sighting, the team saw nothing for five days. So, children saw this herd, spotted this herd, three, four miles away, very far. Can barely tell what it is. Sometimes I wonder how he do it, how he does it, because he's just watching patterns, changing patterns in the heat haze on the, on the horizon. But at this distance they weren't going to get any useful footage. A lucky break was needed. And an overnight snowstorm didn't seem to be it. With the temperature plummeting to minus 20, the team and breakfast needed thawing out first. We're well, having a competition to see who warms up first. My hands, or this frozen can of pilchards. Uh, that's what it's come to. Eating frozen pilchards out straight out the tin. That's all we've got for breakfast. I think I might pass on for it. The vehicles were useful for spotting camels, but to get close, the team had to be on foot. After walking hundreds of miles, they were still no nearer to a sequence, and it wasn't helped by having one less camel to film. Gobi wolves had got to this one first. It's all the car, obviously, I mean, that's, that's a window. The reflection, low sun. The rear ends of running camels continued to dominate the team's filming, and it was beginning to cause frustrations. So, no footage today. Um, they're supreme long-distance travellers, these animals, um, and we're finding it difficult to keep up in the, in the vehicle, uh, let alone by foot. So I'm absolutely knackered. Um, slightly annoyed that we haven't really got the footage that we want the last couple of days. Um, so I guess it's Camels 1, Film Crew nil. <sighs> Fortunately, Joy Jin's sharp eyes remained on form, and when combined with sheer dogged perseverance, the team's luck finally began to change. Not only did they start getting headshots of camels, but fascinating behavior. Strange mating rituals and snow eating. Wild camels remain one of our planet's least known animals, so this 